we will literally be going through the ins and outs of candle making from the wax i use to the fragrance oil i use to how much fragrance oil i use like we'll be going through the whole entire candle making process so if you want to learn how to make candles you're trying to start a candle business or you're just really interested in the process in general this is the video for you so keep watching my whole life has changed ever since you came in i know you played it I'm about to set up my candle station so I can go ahead and start making candles. I got a couple of pre-orders that are due like tomorrow, so I need to make sure I get those done tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then make a few other things as well. So Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that I can post more videos like this. Share this with your family and your friends. Hit that post notification bell so you'll be notified every time I post another video. Now let's get right into it. So here is my official setup. I'm setting up in an Airbnb be right now so it just i just had to make it pretty much work but i'm going to show you guys how i set up and exactly what it looks like and majority of the things that you need so first and foremost i have this little cart here this cart helps me just like keep things organized and have a storage spot for each thing to have a place um so first um i always at the top of the cart put the wax melter which is going to melt all the wax um, my scale which is going to weigh um, my oils and my wax and then I have this little box that has my recipes on it just in case I forget as like a quick reminder these are my wig bars that hold the wig in place my thermometer and then I just have a whole bunch of colors of dye if I ever want to get creative and change the candle color then these are all of my pouring pitchers so that I can melt the wax and pour it into the containers and then on this shelf i have container material so these are wax milk containers here wax milk containers these are tea light containers these are the wicks the wick stickers and then the warning label here and then on this lower shelf my fragrance oils that i need um my wax here and then i also have like little add-ins like flowers rose petals lavender buds whatever else i add to candles to like make them look more decorative and then i have just a trash bag right here so like anytime i need to throw trash away and this is like um the excessive part of my inventory so jar the jar lids here i have some more wax in here i have some jars right here also on this side i have some more jars and then in that big box is like everything else i need all my little knickknacks like my labels more just more stuff <laughs> that is unimportant right now so this is my candle working space for right now so now y'all see my entire setup and I am ready to actively begin making candles. The first thing that I'm going to start with is by melting the wax. We need the, the wax to be melted in order to make the candles. It doesn't take too long with this wax melter. This wax melter works really fast, but it does take about five to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna just get the wax melting so that it can already be hot so that we can go ahead and start making the candles. It's literally not rocket science. You literally just plug it in. Oops, Plugged in and now I am going to add my wax to the wax melter. Um, I'm going to put it on low. I'll put it on warm because I'm going to add a lot of wax to it and I don't want it to burn. I am using 464 Soy Wax by Golden Brands. I use soy wax because it's natural, it's organic, um, it's good for the environment, it's biodegradable. Our candle company is all about making sure that we're keeping the environment clean and safe as well as our people. So when you inhale soy wax, it doesn't have any toxins or anything like that in it. So that's why I use soy wax. Golden Brands is just the brand that I started with. It works really well for me. And um, it's also a pretty um, high quality, but affordable brand at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the wax in the wax melter and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, y'all, so the wax is on there. We're gonna go ahead and wait for it to melt. While that's melting, the next step that I'm going to take is I am going to go ahead and clean my pouring pitchers. This is what I pour the wax in to be able to transfer the wax to the candle so that the fragrances don't get mixed up um, with each other. Um, usually after I use them, I do clean them out with hot water and soap, 
but the last time I used them, I guess I didn't have time or I was just doing a lot because they're all dirty. I have four of them and they're all dirty. All right, y'all, so now I'm just about to clean the porn pictures. It just takes hot water and dish detergent, so. Y'all, so we have our clean porn pictures and our clean spatulas. Okay, so now that our porn pictures are clean, we can go ahead and start making the candles. So the wax is not fully melted and that's because I had it on warm and not higher. So I'm gonna put it on 200. So now it can uh, melt a little bit faster. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and check the temperature to see if the wax that is melted is ready to be poured. So because it's soy wax, it's melting point is I believe 185 degrees. So I'm gonna just make sure that the wax that's melted is at 185. If not, we'll just wait until it reaches 185. The temperature is at 180. We're just gonna give it a little bit more time to go ahead and melt down and get to that 185. Then, oops. In the meantime, we're going to get our glass jars prepared. Um, we're going to put our warning labels on the glass jars and then we're also going to wick the glass jars as well. So personally, I like to keep mine in the box. I just feel like it makes it easier to avoid mess. You can do everything in the box, turn them around, pour the wax in the box. That's just how I like to do it. I used to take them out the box. It does give you more room and more space, but it's just much more messier. So I keep them in the box, you know, just a little tip. All right, so I have my warning labels. I'm gonna go ahead and put one in the middle of each glass jar at the bottom. So I just put the warning label on each uh, glass jar. I'm going to turn these jars over and add the wick to the center of the jars. Wick every jar. Um, basically, what you do is you take your wick. I use cotton wicks, again, to keep everything clean, and I like the way they burn. They burn pretty smooth. You take your wick, and then you take your wick tab, which is a little sticker. Take the little covering off of the sticker. No longer have that flap. You make sure you line up the, six, the sticker with the wick. Pull it off, and it looks just like this just stick it right in the middle. I try to eye the middle um, and then I press it down with my fingers to make sure it's secure. Since we have been doing this, the wax is now fully melted and it is ready to be poured. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the wax. As soon as I, I got wax on me already. As soon as I get the wax into the porn picture, if my candle is gonna have any color, I go ahead and choose the color right then and there. So I'm just going to look for brown few drops in there. I did about 10. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick stir to make sure it is distributed. Right now I'm using liquid dye. I do prefer uh, dye chips, but liquid dye just works a lot faster, honestly. Dye chips are much more vibrant. Here is the brown. Once the wax gets to 160 degrees, um, that is when I add my fragrance oil. So the wax is currently at 165. So I'm gonna just let it cool down just a little bit more before I go ahead and add my fragrance oil. I'm doing a coffee scented candle. So the fragrance oils I will be using today, chocolate, hazelnut coffee, and vanilla. I'm using these three fragrance oils and I'm going to put equal parts um, for it to smell really good. So when you're using soy wax, the wax has a 10% fragrance load. So what that means is you multiply 10% by the amount of ounces of wax that you are using. Um, so because I'm using 14 ounces of wax, I'm going to use 1.4 ounces of fragrance oil. That's how much fragrance oil you can go up to. So I use the highest amount because I like my candles to be very, very fragrant. I believe you can go as low as I want to say six or eight percent of fragrance oil if i'm not mistaken but 10 percent is definitely the highest amount and i use the highest so i'm going to be using 1.4 ounces of fragrance oil so i'm going to split 1.4 into three because i'm using three different fragrance oils hey siri what's 1.4 divided by three i'm using 0.4 ounces of each fragrance oil four of the 
but after I pour, I mix for about two minutes. You wanna make sure that you mix this in really well because you want your fragrance oil to bind with the wax. So after I go ahead and stir and mix in that fragrance oil real good, I go ahead and I let the wax um, cool down to at least 130 degrees Fahrenheit and then I will pour. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting on that to cool down, I'm gonna be making some other candles. The and wax is officially ready to pour. 133, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour it as long as it's not more than five above or more than five below, I still go ahead and pour. And I try to pour very slow. When you pour too fast, it can cause sinkholes because the wax is moving at a very fast rate. Um, so I try to pour as slow as possible. I use my wick bars to just make sure that the wick is centered. And now we just wait for it to cool. Okay, y'all, so I already delivered the other candles, but this is kind of how it came out. I am using a um, 12 ounce jar and it holds about nine to 10 ounces of wax in the jar. So if you pour at a higher temperature, sometimes that can create sinkholes or even if you're pouring too fast or if after you pour the candles, you move them, it can create sinkholes. So I have a little baby sinkhole right here and right here um what i would typically do to get rid of the sinkhole is i have a heat gun the heat gun is kind of like a blow dryer i don't have it with me right now but the heat gun is kind of like a blow dryer and you kind of just you know hold it on top of the candle it melts the wax at the very top it melts very slowly so it doesn't melt the whole entire candle but it melts the wax at the very top creating an even melt pool which then allows the, the top to like have a smooth surface or two you can um top it off with some more of the wax um left over from your pouring pitcher um and just give it a, a smooth even layer at the top so yeah, this is how the candle came out. So this is another one that doesn't have a sinkhole. That means I poured it at the right temperature. I didn't move the candle. I poured it slowly, so it looks a lot better. Typically, I just use a scissors to cut it straight across the top. Just like that. And sometimes I cut it a little bit lower. Sometimes when you put the lid on it, it can crush the wick and cause it to move. So I try to cut it a little bit lower in the parameters so boom and that is how you make a candle so i've been making candles for about four years now so i would say i'm pretty you know up there on the expert level i would say personally i do want to test out a lot of other waxes i've only worked with so many waxes when you're a candle maker you do want to kind of test out other products to see what you like best so i have tested out parasoy wax i've tested out these wax i've tested out coconut wax i've also tested out soy wax i prefer soy wax because it just so happens to be a little bit easier for me to work with um, soy wax is also clean it's biodegradable it's easy to get up off the floor um so i prefer soy wax for those reasons um, but I definitely recommend trying every single wax um, in the book if you have the money to and the time to, to really see what wax you prefer, you like to work with so you can get your candles exactly the way you want them. I also use the highest amount of fragrance load. So what that means is that there's a cap on the amount of fragrance oil that you can use in your wax. And that is because fragrance oil is flammable and if you add too much of it, it can cause the whole entire candle to catch on fire or you can overload the candle with fragrance, which can ruin the quality of the wax and the candle, making it not smell as fragrant or too fragrant and burning off the scent too soon to where the candle is not long lasting. I use the highest amount of fragrance load in my candles because I do believe that soy wax is one of those waxes 
that doesn't retain scent as easy as other waxes. I'm able to get as much of a scent from the soy wax that I possibly can. That's just my personal opinion. There are people who use the lowest amount, which is 5%. I also think that once you test out your fragrances and your waxes, you can kind of see like which fragrance oils are super fragrant and you don't need a lot. Like for instance, like hazelnut coffee, that fragrance oil is very strong. Coffee scented oils are very strong. So therefore, I don't necessarily think you need to use the entire 10% of that fragrance oil if you're using that fragrance oil um, by itself. Something like vanilla or lavender, I do think that because those are lighter scented oils, you do probably wanna use as much as you possibly can so that you can really smell them. Another thing, wax melter over here. I got this wax melter, it's an eight. Is it an eight gallon? It's a eight. I got it from a sweet little candle coat off of Amazon. I believe it was like $80. Um, there's so many on Amazon, so you can find them anywhere. It works really well. It melts down wax super fast. I had no problems with it. I really love this wax melter, but if you wanna start off small, there are smaller ones. Again, I use cotton wicks because I feel like they're clean and they burn down super easily. I try to shop for my materials locally. A lot of my materials usually come from the Flaming Candle Company, which is in Hiram, Georgia. But I do like Candle Science because they do have a large variety. Variety. There's also Lone Star Candle Company that sells wholesale candle materials. Um, Amazon is really good. Amazon Business is really good for certain things like equipment that you may need. Walmart has a lot of the equipment as well. Personally, when I am putting color in my candles, I do prefer to use dye chips. Little chips of dye. I personally do feel like dye chips are much more vibrant in color when you use them in wax than liquid wax. I feel like you don't have to use as much dye chips to uh, get a vibrant color. Um, but with the liquid wax, you have to use a lot of drops. Um, but I use them both. They both work really well. I just prefer the dye chips because I feel like they're more vibrant. If you're going to add color to your candle wax, I always recommend to do it as soon as you pour your wax into your pouring pitcher because the color will bind better with the wax at a higher temperature. When making candles, temperature is always your number one thing. You wanna make sure everything is done at the right temperature because that is what's going to determine how the quality of your candle comes out. Everyone, you gotta do what works for you. There are different people who use different temperatures for different parts of their process and it works for them. I follow this rule. Melt my wax to 180, pour in my dye at 180 in my fragrance oil at 160 for my wax in my containers at 130 that's what i stick to that is what has been working for me and yeah sometimes i may catch the temperature at a little bit above or a little bit below and i would still go ahead and do it because it doesn't make much of a difference from a few numbers up or a few numbers down like five five like if i waited too long and my my wax is now at a temperature of 130 i'm going to reheat it to get it to one 160 so that I can add my fragrance oil in if that makes sense um, again it depends on what kind of wax you use so definitely know what your melting point is for the wax you use definitely know what your fragrance load is for the wax you use really play around with different waxes and see what different temperatures will work for that specific wax okay um, it's a pretty simple process honestly it's not too complicated it's just a lot of trial and error it is a lot of um, watching the temperature, watching the thermometer, um, but it's a lot of creativity as well. You can play with different scents and different fragrance oils and create custom scents that smell really good or you can create custom scents that smell really bad. If you wanna create your own scent and you wanna use multiple different scents to see how they might smell, um, a trick that I use is I get Q-tips and I stick them in the fragrance oil um, those two or three or four scents that I'm gonna use. And then I put them in a Ziploc bag, let them sit for an hour or two, and then smell the Ziploc bag with all of those Q-tips um, in there to see how that scent will smell in a candle. And of course, it might smell a little bit different because it's going to be disintegrated in wax. So it's not going to probably be as strong, but it gives you an idea of what those scents will smell like together. I hope this was helpful to any candle makers out there or anybody who's looking to 
start candle making or anybody who's just interested in what the candle making process looks like um this was the behind the scenes for me i really appreciate you guys for watching if you want more videos like this don't forget to like comment and subscribe also turn on that bell so you'll be notified every time i post another video i love you guys jesus loves you guys and i'll see you guys in the next video